Hi everyone, welcome back to Busy Bee Mom. If this is your first time here, my name is Jennifer and my mission is to inspire you to be happy, live full, and love life as I am also being inspired to do the same. Today we are talking about self-care. Several years ago, I realized that I was not doing a great job of self-care and self-love. I realized that I was focusing primarily on my role as wife and my role as mother and my role as a daughter and caretaker for my father, so much so that I neglected myself. Once I realized that this was happening in my life, I decided to take control and take authority of my own happiness and take authority over the direction of my life in so many ways. And so I began by practicing self-care in some areas that were really immediate for me, really easy for me to get my hands around. As we talk about self-care today, I want you to think about self-care as and I want you to think about it in the big picture. There's not one specific or particular thing that is identified as self-care because it's going to look different from woman to woman, from wife to wife, and from mother to mother. And so before we get into specifics, I really want to give you sort of my big picture of how self-care began to look for me as I sort of began this journey. And I'm doing this because I want you to see that a lot goes into self-care and it doesn't have to look the same for everyone. I began my self-care journey by updating and building my wardrobe. When I looked at my closet, because my closet was a place that I went to every day and walking around in my clothes was something that I also did every day. And so that was sort of a sore spot for me because I didn't feel excited and happy and confident about the way that I looked. And I didn't know much about what clothing flattered my body. And every time we got ready to do something, I felt like I needed to go buy something because I just didn't have an adequate wardrobe. And so a big part of my self-care in the beginning of my journey was updating and building my wardrobe. And the next thing I did was learn how to apply my makeup in a way that would be flattering to me, in a way that I could look in the mirror and say, wow, I really like this. And so I combined those two areas. Well, with those two areas, with my wardrobe and my makeup combined, I began to look better. And as I began to look better, I began to feel better. And so as I began to feel better, I began to naturally seek out other ways to take care of myself. And so I began to take note of my own feelings. How did I feel? I didn't like my energy level. And I could see that I had some issues with my skin and that led me to really begin to seek professionals and do my own research on health and bettering my health, which led to um, a fitness routine in my life. And so as my health improved, my fitness level improved, I liked the way I looked at my clothing and I was able to really pull myself together with accessories and my makeup. I was feeling really good. And so from there, I began to pay more attention to where I wanted to have fun. And I began to do fun things for myself each week. I was really good about finding activities for my children and coming up with things for my husband and I to do, but what about the things that were specific for me? And so I began doing things like going to museums once a week, going to a restaurant for lunch that I was interested in, going to a movie, taking a walk, finding a waterfall and sticking my feet in the water or going to the sauna or going to a jacuzzi at the gym. I just found ways or things that I could do that brought me joy, things that were of personal interest to me that maybe would not have been of interest to someone else. But for me, it was something exciting to look forward to when something engaging that I could do, whether it was educational or just pure entertainment, it was for me. It was time carved out each week for me to do that. And I 
called those outings my mom's time out. And sometimes mom's time out was time in. I would maybe do something crafty that's outside of my comfort zone or cook or prepare myself a special lunch just for me or read a book. And that was really like a highlight of self-care for me. And from there, I began to do things even daily like soak my feet or do some sort of pampering face mask. And from there, I began to look at what are my personal goals, not my relationship goals and not my family goals and not my vision for my children and things like that. But what are my personal goals? And so I began to really sort of lay out my personal goals and become engaged more with the things that I wanted to see. And so... All of that self-care led my life into such a positive direction with lots of momentum and I was attracting people and information and knowledge and feeling good and still growing and still seeing where, wow, there's so much room for me to continue to grow and expand and evolve. And I was really excited and I even began to look at the things that were in my life that were not authentic to who I really knew I was and I began to remove a lot of activities. I began to remove a lot of the things that I was putting energy towards and slowly replacing them with things that were truly authentic and special and of value and concern for me. So that is sort of the big picture of my self-care. And I'm here today because recently I have noticed that I have fallen off of that track of self-care. And it just really shouldn't be. And as I have fallen off of that track of self-care, I notice that my energy level is low. And just as one thing spurred on so many things, when I start to neglect self-care, other things start to go away. So just as fast as self-care ideas started to explode in my life, as I began to neglect areas it has begun to deflate as well. And I don't have as much energy or I don't have as much drive or I don't have as much clarity because I'm not caring for myself. I care for my family, I care for my husband, I care for my children. And so I need to validate myself and get back on track with caring for myself as well. And I don't know where you are with self-care and this challenge that I'm presenting to you could be a challenge for you if you practice little to no self-care in your life. And if you do practice self-care, it can be more motivation to do even more because there's lots of room for self-care, <laughs> lots of room for, you can always do more. I recently watched a video by a fellow YouTuber named Mina Arfan, and the name of her channel is The Universe Guru, and I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below, and if you're not familiar with her, I highly, highly suggest that you check out her channel. She's very big on self-care um, and lots of other things as well, but on the subject of self-care, it is something that is very near and dear to her heart, so if you um, want to know even more about self-care, her channel is a great channel to check out. One of the things that she said in a recent video was for people who are just getting started with really honing in with this concept of self-care, her suggestion was that you take 15 minutes per day to do something for yourself. Anything that is for you, that you take 15 minutes to do that, because by doing that, you're going to start building the momentum. You're going to start building a routine and establishing a habit of taking care of yourself. And so that is the challenge that I want to extend for you if you are new to self-care. If you're already one who takes care of yourself, then take this challenge as something else. Think of something else that you can do for yourself in the area of self-care. Now let's talk about some things that you can do for self-care if you're having an issue with coming up with, wow, what do I do for myself? Let's talk about some ideas, some things that you can do. So some of the more typical things that we think of as it relates to self-care as women would be um, taking a hot bath or a luxurious shower or foot soak 
or some other pampering thing like a massage uh, or getting our nails done, a pedicure, manicure, and those of um, those types of things. But we can also look um, from a broader perspective because self care is not just about pampering ourselves and it's not just about beauty per se, but we can also look at maybe it's 15 minutes of reading, 15 minutes about of reading about nutrition, things that are that pertain to maybe a particular ailment or a particular health concern that you have. Taking 15 minutes each day to read up on some things or speak to some professionals concerning you. Taking 15 minutes to set some appointments, set um, some medical appointments that you've neglected, seeing the gynecologist, going to the dentist, seeing a dermatologist, or seeing a naturopath that can give you an evaluation and suggest holistic remedies um, for different things that pertain to your body specifically. So when we look at self-care, it doesn't have to just be about our nails or picking out a pretty lipstick or dressing a certain way. It certainly encompasses all of those things and much more. But as we look at Self-Care 101 and we look at this 15 minutes a day challenge, we can also look at some things that um, we don't necessarily think of. It can be a 15 minute workout. Um, it can be a conversation, calling a friend. Um, I know we email and text, but maybe having a 15 minute conversation with our close friends every day is enough to just jumpstart that fountain of self-care that I described earlier in this video. So I hope that this video has inspired you in some way to begin self-care, to um, expound upon the self-care that you already exercise in your life, or even just to begin thinking about self-care and begin to look within and acknowledge and examine how well you take care of yourself. The better we take care of ourselves, the better I believe we can take care of our loved ones in the many roles that we facilitate in our lives. The better we take care of ourselves, the better we can take care of them. And as we take care of ourselves, self-care is not taken away from anyone else. It's actually helping them. It's teaching them to value themselves. It's teaching them how to um, value us. I mean, if we're not loving ourselves, we can't really expect others to love us. I mean, I think we've all heard that saying before and a way that we can show ourselves that we love ourselves is to take care of ourselves. It makes a whole lot of sense when you think of it on that level. If you didn't love your children, I mean, if you didn't take care of your children, it would be hard to say that you love them. I mean, a way that we express that we love them is how well we take care of them and think about how well we take care of them and how much we put into taking care of them and evolving with them and being two steps ahead and in front and behind them in taking care of them. Well, let's transfer that to ourselves times two by building our self-care 15 minutes at a time a day. So I hope that you have found this video to be inspiring to, for you. I hope that it has been beneficial in some way. And as always, be happy, live full, love life, have a happy, happy, blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video.